Welcome to your Monday night snooze fest. It is Son of Scotland here representing on the Fog Wrestling Channel. Reviewing Monday Night Raw, unfortunately, again for like the fifth or sixth week in a row. That is commitment, guys. Sitting up to 4 a.m. to watch this pile of three hour shite. Who else would do that? Who else would be that retarded to sit and watch this crap? Um, probably not that many people, but I'm doing it, guys. So hope you appreciate it. Make sure you leave a like down below. And uh, I'm not going to spend that long on this show because it, it was garbage. Not that the other ones are good, but I just, I'm just i not in the mood here. So we kick off. Adam Pearce is in the ring. He, he's got, he says he's got an announcement. He welcomes back Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon comes back. And straight away this gets me intrigued. Because it is Shane McMahon, so obviously I'm going to be intrigued a bit. Shane gets in the ring and he says that him and Adam Pearce have got an announcement. And he says that it's Adam Pearce's idea. And then Shane allows uh, Adam Pearce to make the announcement and the announcement is there's going to be an elimination chamber uh, with Drew defending his belt and all five challengers are going to be former champions you've got Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, um, The Miz fuck I can't even remember who the other people are um, Sheamus and who was the other guy? who was the other guy? Randy Orton Randy Orton, um, and then and then she, uh, Shane turns around and says to Adam Pearce, you're doing a good job, even though he's not, even though Adam Pearce is by far the worst GM we've ever seen, and there's been some really bad GMs, in my opinion, um, probably Tiffany was arguably the worst on ECW, and I thought Paige was poor as well, uh, Mike Adamley was awful, he was a train wreck, but for, I don't know how, how anyone can say Pierce is doing a good job when the guy is absolutely awful. He's not even got the title, of a, he's WWE official. Does that mean a referee can just start making matches because they're an official as well? Awful. Anyway, Shane McMahon says he's doing a good job, then he leaves. That's it. What was the point? Do we really need Shane McMahon to come? This is just, not, there's nothing here. This is just Shane McMahon's backstage. Oh, why don't we show uh, throw Shane McMahon out and we'll maybe <laughs> get the ratings up by about 10 people or something. Garbage. Shane didn't need to be there. I thought when he came out they were going to do something with him. They'd done nothing. They basically just helped Pierce announce a match that <laughs> Shane didn't need to be there for. Um... Then after that, we get Jeff and AJ Styles. I mean, I, I mean, I like Styles, but his current run's awful. Jeff Hardy has lost, like, 20 matches in a row. I can't even remember the last time Jeff Hardy won. He's been on a jobber feud with Elias, and they stick him in the, the, the chamber as if we believe he's got a chance to win this. AJ botched the calf crusher, gets Jeff to tap out. It didn't even look like he had it fully locked in, and Jeff's tapping. Uh, this match went too long. It's sad to see. I mean, this was, I mean, normally this would be, well, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles. Seen this in TNA and it was pretty good, but I mean, now it's pretty irrelevant. AJ Styles' run is awful, and Jeff Hardy has, has become pretty much a mid card jobber in WWE. I mean, after this, we had um, Drew and Pierce backstage. Drew says that he's not too happy. He thought he was going to be. Uh, no, it was Drew, not Drew and Pierce. It was Drew and Shane. Shane. Uh, was leaving, and Drew said he thought due to their history would have given him a bit of, um, you know, a bit of a warning because of this. And Shane kind of played it awful. He needed to make a big match. I mean, who cares? I mean, awful. Up next with Matt Lee and uh, Keith Lee, or Matt Riddle, should I say? And Keith Lee. I right, I got the names wrong, but let's be real. Two two fucking jobbers don't deserve to get the names right. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep calling them by the wrong names for disrespect, and I'll, I'll give I'll give Matt Riddle a bit of a pass here, but Keith Lee. What a monotone bastard here. This promo was goddamn awful. Spoke in the exact same tone. Uh, I don't think you can beat Bobby Lashley, but maybe I can beat Bobby Lashley and I can beat you. Fuck off. This guy is nothing but a big fat fuck. Overrated as hell. People marking it as if he should be the next champ. The guy's, the guy's a bum, right? He's a bum. Guy's awful. Anyway, speaking of awful, up next uh, we, have, we have Retribution. First is the new day, Ali's on commentary, and he questions why WWE are giving him a live mic. And I question that also. A guy like a guy like Mustafa Ali should be setting up the rings. I mean, that's if he's lucky enough to be employed. This guy should not be on microphones. And then he starts talking about ch uh, championship belts, and he's saying how the, oh, the new day all had their title shots, their title reigns. Now it's his turn. What kind of mentality is that? That's like Ryberg, uh, Ryback mentality. Oh, we all we should all get paid the same money. We should all be given a chance with the title. I mean, that's not how it works, right? The stars get the titles. Hulk Hogan was the champion back in the day because he was the fucking guy that drew money, right? He's the guy that drew eyes to the TV screen. Mustafa Ali is, is never drew shit, right? Apart from crickets, that's the only thing he can get to draw to an arena. Awful. Right? If the guy thinks he should be champion, then he's fucking more delusional than I, I thought he was. 
Um, new day win. It's it, this is you know this is it's pretty far fetched. We're supposed to believe Retribution originally. We're supposed to take over the WWE and they were going to you know, defeat the entire roster. And now they can't even beat two members of the New Day, a fucking a team that wear unicorns on their heads. I mean, come on. A team that come out of a box of cereal and, and the retribution can't beat them, so you know, it is what it is. Garbage. Up next with Seamus and Pierce. Pierce is complaining. I mean Seamus is complaining. Fuck it, I'm complaining, guys. This show wasn't good. Anyway, Seamus is like Ah, uh, it's supposed to get a one on one match, fella. Why did you change it? I'm being screwed. There's four other people in the match now. Right, who cares? No, nobody wanted to see Drew versus Sheamus, right? At least in the chamber or something. It could be a fun match. I wasn't interested in Drew versus Sheamus. And to be honest, there's another pay-per-view before um, WrestleMania. I wouldn't half be surprised if maybe Sheamus comes as the last guy in the chamber and they do Sheamus versus Drew at uh, at Fastlane. So I mean, I, I wouldn't say that match. Probably that probably that match probably will still happen, like, but it's not going to happen. At the chamber after that, with Flair coming out. And then he introduced that uh, Lacey Flair looked really fucking old and he had an awful suit on. I don't quite know what the gimmick was, but he looked old coming down the ramp at one like one mile per hour. I hope that's what he was intending to do. Maybe he was trying like a new strut. Because if that's how Ric Flair walks, then I mean the guy probably should be in a wheelchair or something. And he, he cut a promo, right? And don't get me wrong, you, you can you, you, when he cut this promo, man, you can tell it's the nature boy, right? You can tell that this guy is a fucking star and everyone else isn't. But the guy is aged. There's no doubt about it. I'm not. You can just. You can tell he's aged, but not just from a like a physical standpoint. Not just like looking at him. Just not his image, but just the way he was cut in the promo. The way he sounds. You can. You can tell this is a man that is in his seventies and not even back in you know in his fifties. The guy was cutting great promos. Even when he went to TNA, man, the guy was cutting great promos. But now it's it's kind of similar to McMahon. McMahon. In the um, like early two thousands, late even late two thousands, he was still Vince McMahon. Uh, even that sit down uh, contract with CM Punk, he was McMahon. But uh, for the last like four or five years, anytime we've seen McMahon, he, he's it's not only has he looked like shit, but he, he sounds like shit as well. There's not that intensity there. And McMahon and Flair, I'm I'm sorry to say it, they're, they're fucking legends, both of them. But they're not the same people anymore. They're not even close. At least Undertaker. He can still do the gimmick. He can, he still, he can still talk the talk. He maybe can't walk the walk as much in the ring, but Undertaker, he can still pull off the Undertaker gimmick. These guys, they cannot. They, they, they're only pulling off the old man gimmick. I, I see Fence and I see Ric Flair, and unfortunately, they're becoming just old men. And that's it's really sad to say that, but that that's the truth, man. Um, Lacey fought Charlotte. Um, the winner was gets a shot at. Asuka and Charlotte got disqualified after beating down Lacey. Up next with an Edge promo, Edge versus The Miz. And it, you think The Miz is alright in the mic, but then you see Edge and Miz on the mic together and Edge just fucking shows that he is levels above The Miz. I mean, he's levels above everybody up on this current roster, apart from probably Randy Orton. That That is the only guy that can probably touch Edge at the moment. Edge on a totally... Um, different playing field to the Miz, and he, he fucking made the Miz a guy who's like what been in WWE now for fifteen years. He made him look like an amateur. So the Miz, he says to the Miz, "You're content being awesome." Edge says, "I was can I I was um awesome twenty years ago," uh, and it is true. I mean, Edge just totally knocked out of the ballpark. Um, up next with Priest and Garza. I mean, Garza I haven't seen him in about a year. Now he's back, and we're supposed to care. I didn't. Priest wins. Who cares? Um, after this, we had Keith Lee versus Matt Riddle in a decent match. It was a decent match. I'm not going to say it was shit because I hate Keith Lee. It was a good match. Matt Riddle hit him with everything, but couldn't get enough. To, couldn't do enough to get the uh, the job done, which was a bit unfortunate. So I kind of wanted Matt Riddle to win. But after Keith Lee wins, holy shit, man. Bobby Lashley comes down and he absolutely looked like a monster. Not only is this guy a tank... This guy's steroids have their own fucking steroid supplier. That's how big this guy is. But not only that, he looked like a fucking machine. He looked like a star. He looked like an absolute arse-kicking machine. And when I look at Bobby Lashley and MVP, it, it, it's, it's Heyman and Brock Lesnar. But I think potentially even better. Because let's be honest, we've seen Brock, Brock Lesnar's been around a, a long time now. And Paul Heyman has been cutting the exact same promo for, what, eight, nine years. So Paul, uh, MVP... And Bobby Lashley are fresh. 
So to to me, they're like the black version of Heyman and Lesnar, but I think with more potential. They need to pull the trigger on Bobby Lashley. He came, he came out and destroyed Riddle and Keith Lee. I'm a wee bit worried, to be honest, that they're going to put Keith Lee over and give him the belt. But <laughs> if they're doing, if they're putting Keith Lee over Bobby Lashley because they plan on pushing Lashley for the the main title, then I am all for that, man, because this guy is a fucking machine. And hopefully, hopefully he gets a world title run this year. He deserves it. He should get it. And I believe with MVP, you know, doing doing the talking for him, the, the, the combination of MVP, Bobby Lashley, could be amazing. And there's not many things I say on current wrestling that could be amazing, but this is certainly one of it. Bobby Lashley, the way he moves in the ring, I, I, I know he's in his sport, he's like or whatever, but he's still, you wouldn't think it the way he moves. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he's I think he's better than he was in his first run in WWE. He, I know he's, he's a lot greener then, and obviously he's... Got a lot more experience now, but even from a you know a physical in in ring like standpoint, he he hasn't slowed down with age. To me, he's as good as he's ever been. Up next with Lana Nia Jax tables match. <laughs> Why I don't really know. Um, Nia Jax put Lana through tables for weeks, and then they just decided to have a table match. So they turned it out a rib. It was a rib on Lana, and then they turned it into an actual kind of feud match thing. And Lana wins. And Nia Jax goes for a leg drop on the um, on the rope <laughs> and misses it. And then all you heard was a scream. Ah, my hole. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Then Lana pushes on. She goes through the table. Lana gets the win. Um, awful, but <laughs> I guess it was kind of funny hearing, um, uh, hearing uh, Nia Jax shouting her hole. And then uh, it was Naomi versus Shayna Baszler. Naomi won. I wasn't actually watching. I was fucking pay I was doing something else. I wasn't paying attention. And uh, Naomi's music played, so I'm, ass I'm assuming she won. I don't know if she won or not. So yeah, that happened, and then the main event, Edge versus Orton, we've seen this so many times, not Edge versus Orton, we have seen that many times, but I actually don't mind seeing that again, it was Orton versus Drew, which I did not want to see again, Drew McIntyre, terrible champ, get the belt off him, at this stage, I think I would prefer any of the five people in that chamber match to win the belt over Drew, that's how much I'm disliking Drew at the moment. And as a Scotsman, it's kind of, you know, disappointing to say that, but it's true. Anyway, Randy Orton, Drew, had a match. I didn't care for it. It was nowhere near as good as the Matt Riddle, uh, Keith Lee match. And then Sheamus gets involved at the end, goes for a broad kick on Drew, ends up hitting, Arke uh, ends up hitting Orton, and then Drew McIntyre hits the Claymore and Sheamus, and the show just goes off there, kind of flat. So, hi right, guys, that is your Raw review. Wasn't good. Um, sooner we get to the chamber, the better. Let's try and get the belt after. Through. Needless to bring in uh, Shane McMahon. That was totally fucking pointless. It's so sad to see Ric Flair how bad he's aged. Edge though, he might be 47, but still fucking as good as new. And um, Bobby Lashley looks like a beast. So, you know, for the Edge promo and the Ric Flair stuff, and Edge was at the man. I'll give this raw... I'm, I'll give it a... Fuck me. I'll give it a free. I'll give it a free. Flair, I like seeing Flair. Edge and Bobby Lashley are phenomenal. And the, the, the Matt Riddle Keith Lee match, I'll give credit where credit's due. It was a good match. And I, I'll give it a three out of ten, guys. I mean, just because I like four or five things on the show, unfortunately, it doesn't make up for the rest of it being absolute garbage. So that's it, guys. There is your raw review. And until next time, let us know what you thought down below. And peace.